In part two of Game Genres for Dummies, we will take a closer look at several lesser known game types and clear up some misconceptions about several of the most popular genres in gaming history. For more answers to gaming's most commonly asked questions, be sure to check out part one of this series and look out for part three coming soon. So today we'll take a look at MMORPGs. We started off part one defining role-playing games and one of the more popular forms of RPGs are MMORPGs or mass Massively multiplayer online role playing games. We should start by understanding the first three letters. MMO, or Massively Multiplayer Online, refers to a type of video game presented completely online. An MMO may have components of a game installed on your computer or console, but it is in fact played entirely online with hundreds or thousands of other players in a shared universe. Most of these games are divided into regional servers organized by time zone to allow players to interact with other players who play at a similar time of day. Many successful MMOs can have millions of players online at any given time, 24 hours a day. Gameplay for an MMO can be literally any style. There are space shooter games, fantasy games, pirate ship games, games based on TV and movies, but an MMORPG is a specific type of MMO that has all the elements of an RPG in an online multiplayer space. Famous games like World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy XIV are excellent examples of MMORPGs having all the classic elements of an RPG like leveling up, acquiring and upgrading skills and equipment, quests, and deep stories full of world building and character progression. For a closer look at what makes an RPG unique, be sure to check out part one of this series. The link will be in the description below. So what exactly is a shmup? Shmup is an abbreviation for shoot 'em up, which really doesn't give you much information other than the genre contains shooting. It is necessary Necessary to look at the genre's roots in the arcade. Most shoot 'em ups involve a vehicle like a spaceship or airplane, or a character in a mech suit with an impressive amount of firepower. Usually, shoot 'em ups were either horizontal or vertical, meaning you would fly from left to right across the screen, or bottom to top, shooting enemies and avoiding bullets. Famous early examples like Capcom's Air Combat games 1942 and 1943 were vertical shooters, while games like R Type and Gradius were horizontal shooters. Some Shmups are called cute em ups because instead of a spaceship, you control a cute anime girl on a witch's broom or just magically flying while shooting magic instead of bullets. While this genre was incredibly popular in the arcade in the 1980s and early 1990s, it has become a niche style today enjoyed by a passionate few. These games tend to be approachable for newcomers while being incredibly hard to master. A popular subset of shmups called bullet hell shooters fills the screen with hundreds of projectiles and complex patterns, and the gameplay becomes less about shooting and more about precision timing and pattern recognition, avoiding the bullets to stay alive. Bullet hells do not necessarily have to be shoot 'em ups they can also be run-and-gun games, with a character on the ground in a platforming style game such as the indie darling Cuphead. Let's move on to another weird one, the Metroidvania. Metroidvania might be a very weird term if you don't understand the backstory. A very popular genre amongst indie developers, the Metroidvania combines fast-paced, kinetic combat with exploration and discovery in a way that will have you uncovering bits of the map only to backtrack and unlock previous routes with the new items and skills you unlock along the way. The term Metroidvania is a combination of two different game titles, Metroid and Castlevania. Both series have their roots in the 8-bit era and began as 2D games. The most popular entries that Metroidvania fans and developers point to as being the inspiration for the whole genre are Super Metroid on the SNES and Castlevania Symphony of the Night from the original PlayStation. Both games feature large, labyrinthine maps that you uncover, discovering new routes and new power-ups allowing access to previously inaccessible areas. Both feature excellent kinetic combat and challenging bosses. Metroidvanias can also be 3D games, but it is less common, and it is rare for it to be done successfully. The format just works so much better either in 2D or sometimes in an isometric view. Speaking of isometric view, what is an isometric? Isometric game. Isometric is less a genre and more a perspective, but there tend to be a lot of similarities between games in the isometric viewpoint. Isometric simply means that the camera, or the player's viewpoint, is above the action and on an angle, as if viewed from a security camera at the top corner of a wall where it meets the ceiling, or at various heights depending on how much field of view the developer wants you to see. This perspective allows you to see a large amount of the environment around your character, however, your character is now 
smaller and less detailed, being farther away from the focal point of the screen. Many types of games have had this perspective, but the most common types these days are beat-em-ups and hack-and-slash type games that often have multiplayer. The wider field of view allows several characters to appear on the same screen. Examples of this style are the many superhero team games such as X-Men Age of Apocalypse on the PS2, Teen Titans on the GameCube, or the Marvel Ultimate Alliance series. The Diablo series is probably the most famous example of an isometric game along with fan favorites like Hades and League of Legends. Many isometric games can also be RPGs. Other gameplay styles can work well from this perspective too. Real-time strategy games like the Command and Conquer and Age of Empires franchises or strategy RPGs like Final Fantasy Tactics and the Disgaea series have successfully used the isometric viewpoint for decades. Moving on, what is a visual novel? As the name implies, a visual novel is a story you can see. Not quite a movie, but they can have a wide range of visual presentation from slideshows and vignettes to full-on interactive game sequences and CGI cutscenes. It is usually true that you'll be reading a lot of text, but it is not true that visual novels are not games. The vast majority of these games have elements of gameplay ranging from making dialogue choices that have consequences later in the game to point-and-click segments where you investigate a mystery or a crime scene or examine and hidden objects, there are also often mini-games and puzzle elements to break up the story and add elements of challenge. Some visual novels, like the recent 13 Sentinels, have full-on combat sections between story episodes. If you love something like JRPGs for the beautiful and intriguing stories, a visual novel might be a great palate cleanser between other longer, more challenging games. Let's take a look at another highly visual genre, and that is FMV. FMV, or full motion video games, are a mostly defunct style of game popular towards the end of the 16-bit generation. Compact disc add-ons like the Sega CD attachment for the Sega Genesis allowed game developers to have exponentially more space to create their games than the minuscule size of the cartridges at the time. These CD attachments did not offer any performance upgrades to the respective consoles, just storage and access to CD quality audio. This made things like CGI cutscenes much more viable on current hardware and gave developers a new way to tell their stories. FMV games were a short-lived fad building gaming elements around live-action video sequences. The infamous game Night Trap, known for almost single-handedly bringing about the age of mandatory game ratings, used B-movie style footage of a house you had to monitor over surveillance cameras and trigger booby traps and security measures to beat the bad guys and trigger other pre-recorded outcomes. Because all the outcomes in these types of games were pre-recorded, the player had less direct control over the elements of the game. You did not control a character walking around in the landscape, but rather you were often a voyeur watching from above and making choices that affected which sequence would play out. Ironically, these games have more in common with visual novels than they do with other types of games, but for a short while in the 90s it was very cool to be able to play a game with real people and places rather than pixel-based characters. Recently, as often happens with nostalgia, FMV games have begun to make a comeback in several ports of older games, and even some brand new ones can be played on Nintendo Switch and other modern consoles. Sports games might seem obvious, but they are one of the hardest genres to define. There are team sports like football, soccer, basketball, and hockey. These are probably the first things you think of when thinking of sports games. The Madden series and the NBA 2K series have been running for decades and are always among the best-selling games year after year. But the term sport covers so many other activities, from golf to automobile racing, from Mike Tyson's punch out on the Nintendo Entertainment System to the Tony Hawk Pro Skater series, there is so much variety to be had under the heading of sports games. We have games about the Olympics, games about extreme sports like skateboarding and freestyle skiing, and even activities like billiards and bowling can be considered sports. An important distinction among sports games is how realistic the gameplay is. Games like SSX Tricky and NBA Jam are arcade sports games where the rules may be altered or relaxed, physics may be more over the top, and often often there is a high score element to the game. Other more serious sports games are referred to as simulation games, where the developers take every effort to accurately translate the sport in every minute detail on your screen. We touched on this in the last episode when we discussed racing games, which are a type of sports game. For more on this, be sure to watch part one right after you finish this video. And that's it for part two of Game Genres for Dummies. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, stay classy.